only one! There can be only one. Wii Station X. We have a Nintendo Wii. We have an Xbox 360. And we have a PS3. All running inside a modded PC case of a single power source. Howdy y'all, welcome to the DIY channel. This is by far one of the funnest builds I've done in a long time. The fact that it even works is incredible. So we've got a lot to go through. So let's get into the video. You might recognise this case from past videos where we refurbished this PC and modded the window in the side. Now I got this donor PC off my local marketplace for 20 euros and I found all the consoles from my local thrift store and in previous videos we modded them all. So I'll link all the old videos in the description below. Take these out now. First I start by drilling out all the rivets to remove the hard drive bay and the DVD drive bay. Then I removed anything and everything that I could Then it was time to start to figure out just how these things will fit in this case. Turns out that the only way to fit them in is with a great deal of difficulty and a hell of a lot of luck. So the first step is wiring everything. We need to make sure that the motherboards fit in the case and the wiring is going to work. Our power supply is two 12 volt rails at 20 amp, so we can run our PlayStation off one, our Xbox and Wii off the other. And I want the 24 pin. And normally you need a computer motherboard to turn one of these on, but we can actually trick it by connecting the green wire to an earth. Which is that pin there, to that pin there. The good news is, I just found this sweet unit at the op shop for 10 bucks. I just remove one of the old pins that I don't need, solder it on, tidy up the ends, and now this PSU is always on. We have three power supplies, PlayStation 3, Nintendo Wii, and Xbox 360. We need to work out our polarities. So we're actually gonna have to connect this to measure it, to find out which one's positive and which one's negative. So we're gonna need our power supply. Pin one should be 5.5 volts, pin four should be 4.7 volts. Pin 2 should be negative, and pin 3 is the trigger. So if we put 3 volts into pin 3, it should turn this on, and then we can measure the 12 volts out. Alright, let's flick that on. And we're going to try and measure pin 1. I'm just going to guess it's that one. Oh, what a guess. First try. So that one should be 4. There you go, 4.8. Alright, let's mark it. Draw black on the earth. It's all about process of elimination. If I had connected my earth probe to the pin free, I wouldn't have got a reading because in standby there's zero voltage and it's positive. So even if there was a voltage there, all the meter would show us is the difference. So two volts, negative or positive, depending on the probe orientation. Let's flick that off. We don't want them to touch together. Power supply. Set our power supply to 3 volts, connect our earth to earth, and then when we look up our power, flick that on. So, have we got any power in here? 12 volts! And my positive probe is in the left side, so that means that's positive. So if we switch them, it will say 12 negative. Yep, 12 negative. So that's how we know the polarity. So what we'll do is we'll get our pen, positive, Negative. And then we just transfer our marks to our PlayStation's motherboard. This one is pin one, two, three, four. So now we need to put connectors on. So I want to make these onto those. There's two ways to go about this. We could heat it up with the soldering iron and then use the solder sucker. I'm just going to use a heat gun, blast the heck out of it, and then try and rip them off with some pliers. As long as you're heating up the contacts and not the plastic, you'll be just fine, and you'll save a heck of a lot of time. I want nice connectors on this. Something like this is what I'd like. Can we bend these? I want to get the wires as low as possible. What we can do is we can trim this off. Like we'll put the wires in, crimp it, and then solder the wires to the plug as reinforcement. Some nice thick wire. 
This is 2.5 mil, that's good for about 600 watts. One's got a line, one doesn't have a line. So we'll call the one with the line Earth. Now I like it to poke out just a little bit so that we can get the iron in and get some solder in there. I love this. Yes, you could just give these a good hard crimp and send it, but here is my theory on this. A little bit of flux helps a lot, and then I start to heat up the wire with a bit of solder till it gets nice and hot. And then I go in from the back and start mounting in the solder. And solder always runs to the heat. This way you know you've filled the entire spade connector. Plug is way stronger. Can't go wrong with a bit of lead. Now it's reinforced and permanently connected. Last thing I'm going to do is insulate tape the heck out of them. Just in case they make contact with anything metal inside the case. Got to remember this is completely experimental. And these are live wires. We need to attach our ports to our main power. The bottoms are 12 volt and tops are earth. Solder the earth across. Put some extra wire here that we can use for our positive. Now this is where I made my first big mistake. I just assumed that all the black wires were grounds. But the sense wires, you cannot connect them with the grounds. This will short out your power supply. Whoa! Lightning, that's not good. Cut that pin there, cut the pin there. No more signal wire. Do the same on the eight pin, cut off the other two sensors and we're good to go. This is precisely why I wanted to use these plugs. It makes everything modular. So blow up a power supply, no problem. Just unplug it, plug in a new one. Same with the Xbox, same with the Wii, same with the PlayStation. If something dies, easy to replace. Now with the power circuit on the PlayStation, I want to add a fuse. I'm going to use a 20 amp fuse from a car. They're slow blow and they fit straight into spade connectors. Next I move on to the logic circuit of the PlayStation. At first I was hoping that we could just hook up the 5 volt in ground. But unfortunately this did not work. We actually need to use all the logic that the real PlayStation PSU uses to trick the PlayStation into going into standby mode. So 5 volt I'll use a red wire and grounds I'll use black wires. So I'll solder pin 1 to a red and pin 2 to a black. I always put fuses on my live wires when doing experimental wiring. You always fuse the positive so that it pops instead of the console. If we put the fuse on the negative, the console is going to burn up before the fuse. So you might be wondering, why did our PSU blow up then? Well that's because the short was before the fuse inside the PSU. And that is why I've only bought cheap secondhand PSUs for this project. As for pin free you don't actually need it but I'm going to connect it to my front panel HDD LED so that I know the PlayStation's running. For the free volt logic I'm fusing it and then grounding it through the HDD LED as a status light so when we turn on the PlayStation we can tell it's on and the LED will pull the voltage down to trick the PlayStation into thinking that it's actually connected to a PSU. As for pin 4 I salvage an old resistor off a board I had lying around. Red, black, brown giving us 200 ohms because we need to drop the voltage down to around 4.65 volts so I connect the resistor to pin 1 and this will give us the right amount of volts and a fused connection now we can move on to our Xbox power supply mm -hmm. let's go about here so I'd say the thicker wire is 12 volt continuity testing this is when we use beeps to find out which end of the wire goes where so if we connect our 12 volt to the 12 volt pin, we get a beep. Connect our earth to our earth, we get a beep. With the Xbox we just have four wires, three for power and one for signal. Red is 12 volt, black is the ground, white is 5 volt and green is the signal wire. Now to power the Xbox I'm going to use the CPU connector. If only I had an 8 pin of those. So I'll use the last four pins of the CPU 24 pin instead. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Xbox is some thin ass wire. Even the Wii has thicker wire. How does the Wii at a quarter of the watts have thicker wires than the Xbox? Explain that in the chat guys. I have no idea. 
I like to mark the sides, which are positive and negative, where I'm going to solder to, just so there's no confusion. I'm going to clamp the two connectors in the vise, flux up the eight CPU pins, tin my wires, and then use the wire as a bridge across the two plugs, so they become one plug. Now I'm letting gravity help, so the solder is going to run down into the pins. And that's made one solid unit. Now that we have that solid unit, let's connect it to the plug of the Xbox. And just like with the PlayStation, on the positive side, I use spade connectors and a fuse. This one being 10 amp. I did try it with just these wires. It spins up, but nothing turns on. White is easy. We can just hook that to 5 volts. We'll add a spade connector and fuse. We'll bend this in. That way it hooks to the pin and gives us clean routing. And we just add our fuse. 2 amp. There we go. And our green needs to go to a ground. I add a 1k resistor to gently pull it down to ground. Just enough for it to work and keep it safe and controlled. Brown, black, red is 1k. It's going to heat it up, bend them straight, push the thing out. Same on the other side. Heat it up, bend it straight, push it out. Too easy. This is good if you're trying to save your circuit but if you don't care just use a bit of force now if you're a bit colorblind you can check your resistor with an ohm meter put it onto ohms so you can see the k that means it's not zero ohms it means it's 987 ohms because the gold ring is plus or minus five percent this is well within tolerance now i hook it on and I'm always soldering outside of the case. I don't want to drop any solder into any circuit boards. Used way too much heat shrink. Probably should have cleaned the flux off. Too late now. Zero flux given. Bruh. And that's the Xbox finished. We is the easiest by far. Because they're really nice and they gave us the pins. So we know that's positive and that's negative. Just strip off a lot because the earth wire is like a shielded style. That outer jacket is the insulation. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say that's the earth. White is positive and the shielded style negative. Right, so I've tinned the wires. I'm going to use red for positive and orange for negative so that I know when this is taped up, this wire and this wire is for the Wii and this wire and this wire is for the Xbox. I've put little hooks so that we can route them the same direction. And with everything tinned, you just need a bit of solder on the iron and barely touching it is enough to make a perfect join. And a couple of zip ties, nice and clean and tidy. And I want heat shrink for this bit and then heat shrink to overlap after. I'm just going to twist the ends. So I don't want to heat it up too much here because it will mount into the other wire. So this way we've got plenty of space and we can tin from the end until the solder runs to where we want it. It's pretty solid. And we just snip off the end and we put our heat shrink on. And then we put this heat shrink over. And now we have a super clean, well connected earth well protected wire. To add our spade connectors and our fuse. 5 amp. And last thing we do is just loom tape everything in together and make sure there's no exposed contacts. Now that wiring's out of the way, we can finally start to figure out where we're going to put all these things. Well, I'm happy with the Xbox there. PlayStation here. And the Wii can fit perfectly in the CD tray.
we have a proof of concept Wii, Xbox, PlayStation. Everything's in there, bolted down or screwed into place, running off our new power supply. We have our light bar for our Wii. We have our DVD drive with wire extension for the power, the disk drive for the PlayStation, and all the wiring is hidden in the back. You can see everything is bolted with nylocks, threaded rod. It is solid. We have all our fuses. We have heaps of ports for adding in water pumps, fans, anything we want. I don't like the Wii being on AV. You can clearly see the quality is not as good. So I want to do a HDMI conversion and I also want to run everything on a KVM switch. But this doesn't work because of the copyright protection. So we're going to need to bypass that to be able to use a KVM. I'd love to add water cooling custom open loop to everything. So we have a lot more work to do on this. But for now, it is a working prototype. Wow. All three consoles are plugged into my monitor. And then I just turn on the Wii. It powers up. We can throw in a game. And we're away playing. Change console is super easy. We just turn that one off. Then turn the next one on. And now we have a PlayStation running. And if we want to put in a game, Take our disc. The graphics are pretty good on this. Look at that CRT, VCR, what a unit. Cool, so we know that works. We can just turn it off. Let's fire up the Xbox. Open tray. Snap it in. Close tree. And we only need our discs the first time just to back up the games because these are all modded, so we're away. That's working pretty good. Same deal. You turn it off, hold it down, turn off the console. And then we can just turn on anything we want. The best part is the backwards compatibility. On the Xbox, we can also play original Xbox. On the Wii, we can also play GameCube. On the PS3 we can play PS2 and PS1 as well. So we get seven different consoles in one unit. Oh, I'm really stoked of how this turned out. Proof of concept, done. Now I need to start ordering all the pieces to do some upgrades. Thanks for watching y'all. Let me know in the comments what you think and what the next modification should be. We want to make this thing beautiful. So thanks again. And I'll see you on the next one.